before I begin, a quick shout out to Camelia because she did something very courageous today. <laughs> All right, I don't know if you can hear me, but yes, um, I'm uh, the one with the sex. Um, and um, which is worse, I'm the one who's going to be talking about sex and um, underage people. And, but don't worry, there are not going to be any images. Um, everything I know about sex, I learned from my granny, who's currently 80. So this talk is dedicated to her. Simple. What I want to see happening is sexual education in Bulgarian schools right now. Because, although you can assume that the Bulgarian society is, um, you know, quite unflinching about, you know, sexing up things and dressing sexily and talking about sex, um, being sexually provocative doesn't make you sexually responsible and sexually liberated. So um, I would argue that um, the society we now live in is actually one that dislikes sex and it's super scared of sex especially sex, done by females. What we see here is courtesy of Wikipedia, and it's basically a map of abortion legality, uh, which is of cursory importance to this talk. But I just want to show you that we are in the blue zone. So, you know, we're the open-minded, good, free people. Um, as opposed to, you know, the other blue zone, which is the United States, where recently presidential candidate Romney said that actually women who are raped and pregnant as a result should keep the babies and don't have a right to abortion. Um, further down south in Honduras is actually now uh, an offense for you can get that for a woman to take a morning after a pill is now an offense that can get you to prison immediately. Um, so all in all, you know, and moving to Europe and seeing how the Mal Malta and the Vatican are not actually very keen on abortions as well, we may be said to be doing good. Uh, we are an oasis of open-mindedness where abortion is legal, cheap, and uh, we're not madly religious, so it's not you know, that big of a stigma, one would think. Well, um, that's until you actually dig into some statistics and um, find out that Abortion is contraception around here. I mean, nobody does anything else. You'll see some statistics pretty, pretty soon. Um, now, I'm arguing that now it's the very best time to talk about actually introducing sex ed. Because, as you know, the new law um, on child protection is coming up and is going to be discussed in Parliament in May. And there has been vocal opposition to introducing, because this is the really innovative part of the law, it's not all good, but this part at least isn't bad, it has been, you know, a lot of talk about how on earth are we going to poison our children's minds with sex talk in primary school, because this is the idea they have. Well, I'm hoping to show that, you know, the more children we poison, the better off we are. Um, and my God, how this can be misquoted. Um, but what I'm going to um, try to do, it's going to have a certain perspective focused on reproductive outcomes of sex ed, as opposed to, you know, the whole sphere that, of course, um, you know, spans around um, sexually transmitted diseases. Because nobody here cares about sexually transmitted diseases. Just really nobody does. And it's not a concept that works. People think they're immortal. If we look at the statistics, we'll see that so few people actually use condoms in Bulgaria that apparently HIV is just, you know, an American fiction. Um, so I'm going to use um, something that apparently matters to our society um, and which uh, Camelia briefly touched on, and that's the deep cultural anxiety of our slow demographic annihilation. So we're failing as an ethnos because we're producing less children than you know, other minorities, the Roma, the Turkish people um, in Bulgaria. And there is a lot uh, you can see under almost any article that deals with that sort of topic online. There will be somebody bemoaning that Bulgarian women don't actually give birth and you know, we're dying. 
Um, so I'm going to use this perspective because this apparently is something people in this country care about and could be persuaded to think in those terms. And also, if you think about what the state is actually doing now, is the state is investing in in vitro, which is a little bit like putting the horse in front of the cart. Well, no, that's the right way to doing it. The cart in front of the horse. Um, you know, by saying, I'm sure you've all heard the rather suspicious slogan, Povice Bulgarcita za Bulgaria, which, you know, more little Bulgarians for Bulgaria means a specific type of Bulgarians for Bulgaria. So I would argue that instead of oasis of open mindedness, Bulgaria is actually an oasis of unsafe sex. Um, and unsafe sex actually means less Bulgarians. Little Bulgarians for Bulgaria. Because let's just give you a little bit of a run through as, as to all the bad habits that people, you know, here have <coughs> re sex that, you know, come up to the fact that enough women have reproductive issues at a stage in their life when they actually want babies that we are in this, you know, ignominious position of having less babies than the Roman do. So let's see. The most popular birth control method in Bulgaria hasn't changed since the founding of the nation. <laughs> it's interrupted in the course or, you know, in the vernacular, pull out and pray. Results, and that's a painfully, you know, known to death fact. It results in, you know, 20 pregnancies out of every hundred times it's attempted. Nobody cares. People still do it. Um, so, surprise, surprise. Um, and these are um, data by the Obstetrics uh, Society, the National Obstetrics and Gynecology Society in Bulgaria. 80% of all pregnancies in Bulgaria are unplanned. Um, and these are the data that actually put me onto this case a while ago. Um, in the <coughs> Bulgarian news agency, there was once a press conference um, by two leading doctors occupying governmental positions at the time, um, which um, put out the statistics that for um, 2009, uh, Bulgaria has had 34,000 registered abortions, and hey, we're doing good. Um, in uh, 1990, we had almost 150,000, so we're doing good. But on top of that, there was this black figure of almost, kind of thereabouts, 12,000 criminal black market abor abortions. Wait, 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 wait. Abortion is legal. What, what, what black market? I'll tell you what black market in a second. Before that, let's see, 20,000 of all the 34 that were registered and legal were because you know there was no medical problem, but the woman just didn't want the pregnancy, so she terminated it. And of course, next year the figure promptly rose by another ten thousand. So whether we're making progress or we just had a good, you know, a, a dry patch, then it's not very clear. Um, so one thing we could explain what's going on, <coughs> and that's National uh, Institute of Statistics statistic. Around 6% of Bulgarian women use oral contraception or ever discuss it with a gynecologist. That's probably because um, of one very simple reason. My sister, and she will forgive me for mentioning her in this talk a little bit, um, she's uh, 16. Um, she has access to internet, access to all sorts of information, and she still spats back at me, not a, you know, two weeks ago. Oh, um, you know, the pill makes you, you know, grow a moustache and be very, very fat. And, you know, she's learning to be a ballerina, so that's obviously no, no there. We're going to have unsafe sex because, uh, you know, pirouettes need to be made. Um, but that's something that was probably briefly true in the 70s. <laughs> um, and since then, it's been recycled in a society that didn't even try the next generation of pills. No, not for me. I don't want any moustache. So, you know, generations and generations of women in this country have grown up with this, you know, urban myth, and they refuse to test it out and see if that's actually the case. Um, of course, 
this is just for you to see that you know some women are braver and apparently like mustaches better. Um, then, and this is where you know I just clutched my heart the first time I heard it, but that's again statistics from the obstetric society in Bulgaria. 14% of all sexually active couples in Bulgaria use any form of contraception, which means pill and condoms combined. 14%. I really hope you're, you know, you're all here in this room, because otherwise I'll have to you know, just personally do something bad to you later. Um, but, and this is, as you see, the freshest data we have. It's a little bit you know, freaky. Um, so, and this is an actually something that um, was an online, an, an online um, survey that was done. They will consider, you know, hmm, <laughs> that sort of consider using a condom. And oh, by the way, because it's probably going to be a little bit of a men bashing following just now. If you want to call me a feminist, which is an you know accepted term of abuse around these parts, feel free. I can take it. Um, so, ta-da! We, we're getting to this tricky little bit of statistics. Now, this is from the World Bank. The World Bank says we have an incidence of 40 teen, teen pregnancies per 1,000 girls under 18. Well, that's registered abortions. And the tricky part is that, of course, the black market is, oops, created by a demand, um, and the demand is clearly very simple. A person under 18, by Bulgarian law, needs to tell their parents because they have to sanction the abortion. You know, the girl has to go and say, hi, I had sex, and guess what, I'm pregnant. For any number of reasons that I'll briefly discuss, um, this isn't happening in uh, many cases. So, of course, the black market abortion um, logically is fueled by um, young girls who are seeking to terminate a pregnancy without telling their parents. The tricky part is that there is another section of people who are actually of legal age and, you know, apparently somewhat confused, to put it mildly. Uh, now, black market abortions in Bulgaria happen in gynecological wards in any hospital you can walk in. They don't happen in basements using, you know, the tail feathers of a hen. It's been known to happen, but not in hospitals. In hospital, what happens is that the doctor sees a girl who's obviously in distress, and, you know, after shock of discovering the pregnancy comes the denial. She wants to press delete right now. She doesn't want, she doesn't need to, she doesn't want to think about it, she doesn't want to consider the consequences, she needs to just erase the whole thing. And this is where something very predatory happens. The doctor sees a confused, lonely, frightened young woman and says, oh, I see, we can deal with this in an hour, don't worry. You know, money change hands, he puts it in his pocket, he, you know, does the procedure and sends her home without proper aftercare. And this is where things get really tricky. Because, of course, even with proper aftercare, this many girls, you know, experiencing their first abortion are going to deliver complications, to uh, develop complications, even if they're, you know, properly taken care of. What happens if you don't actually come for a checkup? Who knows? The statistic is silent. Now, if we say that one in five abortions may result in sterility, and that's another you know, painfully known fact, and then we have the statistic that 10% of Bulgarian populace is sterile, which comes to this many couples who m potentially want a child, then seriously, investing in in vitro, while obviously a very noble idea, is just not tackling the problem, being reactive to this sort of an issue and not being proactive, not, ed, you know, not introducing sexual education immediately for three-year-olds, I don't care, doesn't make any sense, at least to me. These are some statistics about in vitro. So we're losing a potential of 6,000 fertile women who would once, who would, 
you know, in the future probably want a child, to improper care and not giving them choice and you know, reproductive knowledge to you know, decide for themselves how to protect themselves. But you know, for the four years since the Reproductive Fund has been funding these in vitro procedures, that many women, you know, almost 10,000 been, have been treated. And of course, you cannot put price on babies. There have been, in Bulgaria, 1,500 babies born as a result of in vitro fertilization. That much money has been spent. Honestly, I would wish to see even half of that money spent in schools for people talking to children about what abortion actually is, how the female body works. Because Girls know everything about how the male erection works and how these things actually happen. I've never known a single man in my life who can ma make heads or tails between a cervix and you know a pair of ovaries and what the hell sort of mystery is going on there? I don't want to know. I mean, just leave me alone. And that menstruation, just just forget it. Ew, icky. So. There's something, we're, we're letting generations of men, you know, graduate, you know, high school without having any sort of knowledge as, you know, what the female experience is. And um, I truly believe that if men were introduced to what it actually means to have an abortion, they wouldn't be so callous. I mean, they wouldn't say something that a partner once I consider viable said to me when I said at a you know, carefully considered one night stand, so where's the condom? And he just looked at me, and I've known him. He was a friend of mine before we <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Um, so I've known him, and he is a very well-educated journalist as well. So he turns around at me, and we're in my bed, properly considered. And he says, why, what's wrong with you? After that particular comment, the gentleman found it very expedient to leave the premises via the window. <laughs> but don't worry, I live on the first floor. Um, perhaps I overreacted a bit. So a week later, we met again, and I was like, what's wrong with you? I mean, why didn't you want to? And he just told me something that I never considered. Um, using a condom means you haven't done the right choice. You know. Women don't do sex, women are clean, it's all fine. I mean, if she wants for a condom, hmm, her sexual history, not properly considered a virgin. Of course, I'm a, not a virgin. You know two of my former boyfriends. Of course, I'm not a virgin. What's wrong with you? But this is how men apparently think about these things. I'm making the right choices. I'm only bedding you know, clean women. And actually, because apparently, in Bulgarian culture, and that's something his father told him, the first to introduce condoms were sex workers. So if a woman asks for a condom, <coughs> prostitute, something, you know, something's wrong with that, apparently. So to put things into perspective, um, 20 teen pregnancies per thousand girls in the UK, where 60% of the students are exposed to sexual education. Five pregnancies in the Netherlands, where sex education is available to preschoolers. Need I say more? <laughs>